Okay, folks, thanks very much for joining us. Um, today I'm going to be telling a, a very small micro salmon fly. So the hook we have here is a size 18 eagle claw. Um, to give a comparison here, here's a size 14 Esmond Drury hook. As you can see, it's a very, very small short shank hook. It's the kind of hook that you would use for a mini tube. But we're going to tie it directly onto it. And I find them quite deadly on the moy system, uh, particularly around the tidal baits. But no others have used them in um, the likes of black water with, with good success as well. So but today I'm going to be telling the fly that's done me well over the years, which is a uh, green butt. It's a fairly straightforward harrowing. So I'm going to use glow bright number 12, which is like a, a lime green. And we'll just add it on like we would add in oil on any thread. A quick close to the rear. And be careful of the hook so I'm going around each hook individually here as I'm going down. And once you have about three or four wraps on you can actually cut off the end. Just here. Just be very careful. Okay and I've cut that off before I've actually hit finished the tag so I'm going to keep on going down a couple of wraps. Okay and then on the way back up again I've got two wraps of this floss all the way up and then as I get near the, the end I'm going to use my last two or three wraps on the whip finish. And again being very careful I have to work around the hooks even with the whip finish too. There's two, even three. Okay. So that's your, your butt done. And cut that off. Now you can super glue that, varnish that, or you can work on it if you want. But I always varnish them and set them aside. So I'll take this one off. And I have a couple made up here. Should have had this all ready for the video. Okay, so here's one that's already had a coat of varnish on it. Needing up there's a wee something sticky that's obviously stuck in with the varnish there. Okay. And then um, so we need to change from the glow bright floss in the I have say 16 16 old Phoebus. And um, I have done this in the Edo as well, but if you can get the lighter thread, go for it. And this is very strong for thin thread. So just bear with me here, I'm just feeding this up the bottom. Okay, now then we'll just tie this on. Conscious you want to leave as much room as possible of that head because it could yeah, you don't have much room to play with in a, a hook this size. So again, I'm gonna do a few wraps up. Instead of putting it off, I'm just gonna cut it off. As I'm making use of the downward turns. I'm going to secure in some fine wire. I guess this point, I think the gauge of this is about 0.2 or even maybe even 0.1. And then once we get to the rear, I can be conscious of the, the hook points. Okay, so that's your wire on. And then I want to get some floss. I'm going to double this floss. So I'm going to use half of it on each, each side here and tie that down. And then we're making our way up to the butt. Okay. And then a few turns to secure that there. You've got your, your wire secure so you can start heading back down towards the head area. And then just work your floss down. You could probably use this, you could probably even just use your thread to be honest with you for a fire size, but that's the way I've done it, so I'm keeping it like this, you know. Okay, and again, I'm mindful of the, the amount of turns I'm taking, so I've only done two turns there. I probably have my wax to reduce this, but I'm only going to use two turns. But I'm immediately going to be tan on top of that, because I'm going to be using the wire here so again you won't get many turns 
But three turns will be plenty. Oh, this looks okay. Then just secure your wine. Okay, so there's two turns to secure it, and I don't want to put too much pressure on the soup because you can very easily bend it there, quite weak. So I'm going to be holding the hook up, but at the same time putting down the bobbin. I'm just going to wiggle the wire to come out. Okay, so that's the body done, that's the tag done. So to her wing, you could use fox, but the fox make it tangled in those, those trebles. So I'm going to use black squirrel, dyed black squirrel. Doesn't have to be too heavy either. Just lightly dress this is to dry your low water. Okay. I'm just want this to extend past, just a little bit past the, the treble. And this is where it gets fiddly because you want to do the pinch. You want to pinch as you go around, but it's very difficult. So I always put the thumb and finger just in the first treble here to hold it down. Just be careful you don't stab yourself. And then you, if you're lucky, you can pinch it down and wrap up upwards of the hook. Don't be wrapping downwards to the eye because we should be very careful here that we don't overdo it. Okay. I'm happy with that there. So I'm going to go underneath. And again, I'm doing the same. You could use hackle fibre if you wanted here. I'm just going to use a few strands or a few fibres of the squirrel. Maybe a wee bit shorter actually this time, just like giving like a throat tackle effect. And you have to probably squeeze this up the middle of the treble. And you can go from here. Okay. So you can pinch and loop there if you can. Again, a bit fiddly, but you'll get there hopefully. So you can always make an adjustment. As you can see here. And then so that's my hair, um, my, my hair wing and my throat. So what I'm going to do is because this is because this is square, I'm going to use some super glue to secure it in. Because this doesn't compress too well under the, the thread. Again, I'm making use of the, the left turns. People would use wax. I always super glue the hair anyway. So I'm going to do a few turns with wet super glue. This will stop it slipping out. Then a few turns again on top of that wet super glue that's just been tied in. Okay. Then once that super glue dries in a minute or two, you could use. Uh, scalpel to cut that, which a lot of people use. I don't have all the scalpels that I've been using, I've started to blunt, so I don't have any fresh ones. So I'm just going to use very fine point scissors. These are dental scissors, cost two or three pounds, and they're as good as any. So I think that's the label I've tried now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get underneath, separate the fibers from when they're going above the hook. And grow the hook as much as possible. I'm not going to get them all here. But that looks okay. Again, underneath. I'll probably spend more time trying to cut all these. I see tan the fly. It's a fiddly one, but it definitely worth tan, folks. You imagine low water, a pool full of fish. Everyone's trying to say it's 14 cascades, and you come in with this says 18. First time a fish may have seen it, it's been looking cascades all day, maybe even all week. Why wouldn't it work? Okay, so 
scalpel. It's not as neat as a scalpel, but I'm happy enough. That's a fish and fly. You wouldn't enter it for a competition, but you'd definitely enter it into the water. Okay, and what you can do is start working up the head a little, a little bit. I'm actually going to add in a wee bit of flesh just over the wing as well. Just some pearl, a bit of pearl crystal flesh here. That's in it to say, just on top of it. We're coming through those fibres in the flow of water anyway. Just okay, do that. Starting to work up the head area. Okay. So I'll take one last wee dab of glue here because we just love to get three coats of varnish on a fly that says. Okay. And then at the end, just deal with finish. Deal even towards the front here. Okay, just to shorten that a wee bit. That looks okay to me. And that's it, folks. Not much to it, doesn't take too long to tie either, but definitely worth having one in the box. Um, as I said, I've had days I've had well over 15 fish on this on the lower moi, but the only thing is trying to get them to stay on a hook that size is another thing. Um, I'll try, as we're coming into the summer now, I'll try and do a few other wee Mako travels. So I would do this, I would do a Mako Cascade um, and even a few others as well. I have a few others in mind that I've never even tried before. So um, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. Thanks very much to everyone who subscribed as well. Hit the subscribe button if you're not already. And until next time, tight lines. All the best, folks.